Say hey. Hey, it's for horses. <laughs> I didn't do my hair, baby. Baby, you have like half hair. The perks of being 39. in your head but did I actually die we will if you drive <laughs> I can drive just fine tell everybody where we're going we're going to Georgia baby uh -uh. don't do that what? you're not from the country don't act like it what? city slicker trying to have a country twang Sister wife says it's not. <gasps> that is offensive. You stop it. <laughs> All packed up. Ready to roll. This is what it looks like to go to a show. This is set up for Show Me Snakes in Grovetown, Georgia. Very excited to be here beside Da Vinci Boa, Black Diamond, and Bob's Balls. Some of the best in the business. Are you serious? Why? You saw me press it like a gazillion times. It's ridiculous. Anyway, we just left from partially setting up our Grovetown, Georgia display um, for Show Me Snakes. Headed to the hotel um, because William, other than that nap earlier in the car, is well, We're not heading to the hotel. We're heading to eat. Don't lie on me. Well, no, we're headed towards <laughs> the hotel. Yeah, I'm not lying on you. You silly. It sound like we're going to go lay down or something. Well, but I need a baby. Nap when you the one that's baby. more old than anyone. No. <laughs> you didn't let me finish. See? Oh, shit. <laughs> Babe. Yeah. You look like a pancake laying out on the bed. It's that <laughs> Are you gonna wake up? Oh Okay, I had some chili fries, okay? It is. It's extremely cold. That's it, baby. It's that ball guy. <laughs> the voodoo. Is that it? Voodoo fire, female. Yes. Talk to Willis. Yeah, we need oh, yes. to get done. Definitely. Heck yeah. Oh, snap. Just finished the first day of Grovetown, Georgia Show Me Snakes show. It was a lot of fun. We always have a lot of fun with uh, our breeder friends and enjoy the company that going to the show, show scene actually affords us. Um, we go really just to meet people and talk and actually get out into the community. So anyway, we are about to head back to the hotel, try to find something to eat for dinner and try to enjoy our evening together. Where 
Where we just eat, babe? Well, you ate most of the food. I did not. <laughs> you ate all the cheese bites. I had like five. They were this big. Are you serious? Gonna lie like that? I'm lying. I don't look at me like that. <laughs> Just because you take your hat off don't make you look any more serious. <laughs> you the one Miss Giggles over there don't look like I'm not smiling not one lick. <laughs> it's because you acting. You just farted on that seat. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'll put that on you too. <laughs> hey guys, Flawless Crested Geckos checking in. Will and Audra. Hi. Go ahead, tell me what we're gonna talk about, baby. So, right now we're in Grovetown, Georgia, at a Show Me Snake show. What we thought we would kind of bring to our viewers' attention is the differences between doing a show, um, actually vending a show, and selling on the internet. I guess slight benefits to both, and <clears throat> let you guys determine what's important for you and your business plans and personal uh, goals. Because we, we hear it a lot, you know, people want to get into the hobby and start the business side of it. When you start putting together things, as far as putting things in place to do a show, there's a few things that you should put into play. Brand awareness uh, is number one, I would say, getting out there and being known for something. The brand is important from the time you walk through a door to the time you leave, your body language, the way you talk to people, the way you appreciate your surroundings makes a difference. And that all speaks for your brand. Uh, like I say, when walking through the door, you need to eat, breathe, speak. You need to look the part. Like we attempt and I feel like we're pretty successful in how we present ourselves when we are actually at a show versus how we talk to people on the internet, how we communicate with you guys through social media, all of those things. We utilize shows a lot for us because when we started this, we were solely on the internet. So up until this past year, we didn't do any shows. So the shows for us, specifically for our business program, are more to get out and meet people and to talk and to be able to interact with other breeders. That's been one of our biggest things is being able to interact with our already their customer base, but also make those business connections, be able to see what other people have, how they do things. Absolutely, because there are uh, costs associated with it, it's costs involved. Uh, we did things, we like to say, uh, kind of backwards, and I'm happy that we did it that way. We utilized uh, internet presence, um, promoted, advertised, marketed all across the internet. A lot of times when there was nothing for sale or nothing to sell, uh, we wanted to become a part of the community, hopefully be absorbed and taken in into the hobby and have people remember at least our brand, that FCG logo, uh, as we check out a lot of you guys uh, geckos and, and different groups and just get to be known uh, again brand awareness so uh from the comforts of your own home as far as pushing your brand uh being on facebook facebook is free instagram is free you have a lot of free channels out there where you can promote and put things out uh, morph market they have certain account uh, levels where it's free and um, you can list things up there as well and again, get in those groups, comment on people's geckos. You may end up getting inboxes, people checking out your stuff. Take high quality pictures, uh, whether it's your cell phone, whether it's attachment to your phone. Um, you can take outdoor pictures. We take outdoor pictures and light bark pictures. You have to make sure that you're investing into yourself. Um, you cross that over into the shows. The shows are gonna be slightly different. Um, because you're gonna want to, in our opinion, go above and beyond. We like to uh, show up to the shows and put up a huge display, uh, everything elegant, nice, try to be flawless. Yeah. And so it's more so for us, we love to see it because it's like seeing things come to fruition. Yes, because it's so difficult for me to say that. <laughs> but, 
So the very first show was Fort Mill, South Carolina. And we started off with like the small, this one table, the small deli cups, the, you know, but even when we were small, we had the big idea, the attitude, the, the feelings were still there, the overall vibe. And we legitimately talked to everybody and, and tried to see what worked for people, what didn't, right. you know, what was positive, what was negative, what is the atmosphere? Because we just genuinely do not involve ourselves in any type right. of drama. And what's the mindset? What is the mindset? But if you hang around with five bums, chances are you become the sixth bum. If you hang around with five billionaires, chances are eventually you're going to become that sixth billionaire. We wanted to find like-minded people. Right. And so. when we say like-minded people, we're extremely positive. Um, that's all we like to push is positivity. If we come at us and there's some t something involving negativity, we go the opposite way. Um, it's just too much negativity in the world to keep adding to it. It's just unnecessary. So that's what we're about. Um, so we definitely absorb different mindsets. We listen and try to chime in to help in situations, uh, assist, and also um, absorb. We've learned so much, so much. from other people. Um, again, this in this hobby, we need to continue to learn and get better. There is no reason that we should fail at something or not do well at something and not share that information with everyone. That way, maybe, you know, you're watching this and you want to take a leap of faith and go into business for yourself. Um, and something we offer you or some information we offer you may help you avoid something that we go through. Um, if you choose to still go through that, that's still a decision. But at least you had options in front of you. You had maybe a blueprint, you know, in front of you to say, hey, I'm going to give this a go. Because it's something we always tell each other, you know, you're going to work harder for yourself than anyone else I know we do mm -hmm. um, so the mindsets in the, the show the shows that you attend it depends on what you want from what you're doing uh, what's your end game our end game is to have fun number one and for everything to be enjoyable the shows do allow for us to have a lot of fun get out of town um, enjoy each other's time talk to like-minded people in a great environment. Um, it's just general, just happy. It, so opens, we love that. it opens up the doors for other opportunities absolutely. to work with people. And networking. Networking, absolutely. Networking is a huge, huge, huge thing. If we had to give any business tips to anyone that's trying to start out is legitimately find those people that are successful or what you you feel that you know are your your types of success because everybody's definition of success i believe is different right um some people it's about influence some people it's literally about the bottom dollar some people it's about you know freedom it, it just really just depends on what your idea of success is but align yourself with those people because those are the people that are going to motivate you and create a drive in you to want to be better. It's easy to have motivation. It is. It's really, in any stretch of the imagination, it's very easy to have motivation to do something. What's difficult is to maintain that motivation by self-discipline and consistency and commitment. And, and through obstacles. And through obstacles, absolutely. Because a lot of times, I mean, we've hit walls before and like, okay, this is not gonna stop us. How do we get over it, around it, you know, beside it or through it or under it? How do we do this? Because it's never gonna be, oh, we're, we're stuck. This is what happened, we're stuck, and this is the reason why we didn't succeed. No, how are we gonna succeed? And that's why when we come out to the shows, we like to be around these people that legitimately have that same philosophy. If you follow Altitude Exotics, you follow Brian. Um, he is amazing, first off, but he is probably the most influential for us from the very beginning of our business. Uh, he, his business mind is just phenomenal, um, and we have soaked up every single ounce of everything that we could have possibly gotten from him. He has no idea, I don't believe, right. how grateful we are and how much he means to this business when you start comparing <clears throat> getting more into 
um, shows uh, versus online. Online is going to be probably, and I'm going to assume, uh, at least for a higher percentage, online is going to be more comfortable. Uh, for individuals, um, you're not putting yourself out on front street as much, you're putting yourself in front of a camera. This is not necessary um, to have online, uh, but you also can do it from the comforts of your own home. You can do it from behind a brand if you never want to get behind, uh, behind a camera. You can put things out for limited costs across the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. Your reach, 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 reach. You're going to continue to hear that. That's huge. Reach is huge. Research reach and research it, research it, and see how how many different ways you can increase it across all platforms. That being said, you're going to do all that research on that side. And generally speaking, your costs and return on investment, your, your cost is going to be less your return on investment is going to be more. Markedly. Okay, so your return on investment is going to be leaps and bounds more. Online, you're going to reach people that has access to the internet. So, here's some of the cons. Kids. Typically, you're not going to have kids. You're not going to be able to reach your kids as far as those kid enthusiasts those kids that's interested into the hobbies because, I mean, they're only going to have enough access that their parents allow them to have. Uh, so you're not going to be able to reach uh, children um, to bring them into the hobby. And we need them. We need them because that's what's going to further this industry. Right. I think a lot of people get frustrated with children and don't want to deal with children, but they are the reason why this hobby continues. That's probably why you're in it to begin with because you're at some point in time during your childhood you had some sort of interaction that made you interested in this or positive or negative yeah, positive you could have had that negative. interaction where your parent refused to get yeah. you any reptile yeah. you said the moment i get grown i'm, I'm gonna, getting I'm doing <laughs> this. Yeah. so if positive or negative um that's the big big turning point as far as for online, online versus yeah. shows and shows again that's another perk um you get to meet the kids. There's tons of kids that shows. You get to take pictures. You get to give them bracelets. You get to do different things with them. Stickers. It's really, really cool. Yeah. And you welcome them into a hobby that can be perceived as being scary in a lot of ways. Sure or overwhelming. Uh, I mean, a lot of kids, they see their first snake and they may be in fear. Or their first gecko and they're legitimately scared when it leaps. You know, and then you're able, you're given a chance to explain to them um, how crested geckos behave. You know what their behavior is like what's the causes of a drop tail how do you feed them how do you handle them you get to explain it to them firsthand while their parent is standing there so it's definitely another opportunity opportunity to welcome them welcome a new person fresh person fresh mind into the hobby and further this for another 20 30 years um, the downside of it is the cost involved in doing the show depending on where you're going because you're talking about hotel, you're talking right. about gas, you're talking about all the things. If you do like us, we we do this whole go big or go home thing, right. and you know that's the cost your your initial cost, which a lot of that is one time cost, but it's still an initial and cost. Marketing, right? marketing, you can do a whole other video. Yeah, on that. Um, but those are those costs. So that's an initial cost, and then you've got your cost of your actual tables at each show. Um, you got to decide how many tables you you legitimately need for the things that you have. Do you want to offer other merchandise and things like that? Like we have our hoodies, and I love these hoodies, but it's an it's it's a initial cost. You know, it, it, are you ready to do that? Um, you know, we started out with our deli cups, which and paper towels. And then we upgraded to our little right. black sleeves and then our punks, our little uh, coasters that have our actual emblem and on And that them. all comes from networking, especially with Tristan. Mm -hmm. Tristan, uh, yeah. Tristan uh, from Gecko Junkie. Junkie. Um, networking and just, again, getting around minds that literally are working constantly. <laughs> constantly. And everyone don't doesn't think alike, so they have different ideas. You take some, you take some, you take some. Some of you may not use but you have to pick and choose what you want to use. But the thing is, at least listen. And through listening, we've learned so much already. As a breeder and as a breeder of a lot of 
some really, really good animals. I mean, we, I mean, we like to call ourselves flawless, but we really strive for our animals to be flawless. And um, we enjoy being able to provide the breeders with breeding, you know, animals. Oh, yeah, um, and that's been one thing that we've learned from the show industry is that we've come in and enjoyed everybody so much and have been able to make these connections and they've legitimately welcomed us with open arms and bought uh, animals from us, which is so nice because then we can see that progression and you know once we come to the next show then we can find out how that gecko is doing in that home you know whatnot also that's a, sort of a con to the internet is that once you send that animal out into the world unless that person really legitimately wants to stay in contact with you or you know wants to send you progression pictures right. or those sorts of things you kind of lose touch and um so that that's another kind of pro to the show versus the internet um, but you just need to remember that the show really is more money up front. You get to talk to other breeders and instead of you being home and kind of isolated, you know, and not really getting out there, now you're actually out there with fellow breeders in your hobby and you're able to get right directly from them what they're doing, whether it's uh, feeding, feeding schedule, uh, feeding food types, um, bugs, uh, what certain calcium, what certain vitamins they may be using, distilled water. You get to pick their brains on different things that they're using. And you may talk to 10 different breeders or 10 different vendors and get 10 different answers on what they're doing. They may want to hear what you're doing. Some You may have something that, to offer them. And if you didn't do a show, you'd never be able to give out that information or receive that information and put it to work in your own program. As far as budgeting is concerned. Um, I do want to touch base back on that. For our business in particular, uh, we budget in the shows for our marketing budget. Okay, that's our marketing. That is us putting our faces out there, that's us networking, that's us meeting you guys that have purchased from us previously, that is meeting new contacts, that's really being able for us to get out there and enjoy and put in faces with the Flawless brand. We started our buying in about 2018, I guess. And then that whole year, all we did was collect. And then in 2019, we started really looking at it as, as a possible legitimate business. And the end at the end of the year 2019, we made our first sale. 2020, um, it just really took off. And this past year, 2021, things have multiplied even past that for us the shows are marketing for us you need to determine what the shows are for you versus what is the internet for you is the internet part of your marketing and you go show to show to show what is it that you provide like for instance we had discussed um just between uh, us um about tristan tristan um with gecko junkie he does these amazing pvc enclosures i mean they're they're phenomenal um, and he travels to all the different shows and he's got the most amazing setup. His PVC enclosures are fairly, you know, heavy. They've got a lot of earth to them. So for shipping purposes across the board, I'm sure it's quite expensive to ship PVC enclosures. So that is probably something that like, if you provide something that is heavier, maybe you need to think about putting the shows in as part of your real budget. Like that's, that's to create your business. Um, for us, a gecko is light. We can pop them in, you know, a, a box, a reptiles to you box or, or whatnot, um, and send them overnight, you know, ship them across the world. And it costs flat rate 60 bucks for us domestic and then, you know, whatever export import import is. With a PVC enclosure, that's a lot different. So that that's like weighing your options, trying to figure out what is it that's going to be best for me when I decide show versus internet. Right. So and also to add on to the internet, uh, she mentioned it a bit. 2018, 2019 were what we call building years, where we worked on our collection and posted and posted and posted. It wasn't for sale post, for sale post, for sale post. It was literally, hey, look, look at this gecko. Look, this is what we're working with. What are you guys working with? Um, do you have anything like this? 
that's another thing. Um, a lot of times you'll go to a show, and if the sh you know the the show scene puts it all together, <coughs> and it's a perfect day, and and you get there and you just sell like crazy. You sell I don't know twenty geckos or whatever, and you're like, yes, this is awesome. Um, that is that immediate gratification, that immediate satisfaction. I brought this item, right. I got money for it right now. The thing with the internet is that, as he's mentioning, this kind of popped into my head when we were talking about that, 2018, 2019, with those building years, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that it literally takes time, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of posting without anybody talking oh to you, without goodness. anything. <laughs> you think, this is never going to take off, and then finally it does. You got to believe in yourself more than anything. Yeah. Um, we've had, especially when we got started, we've had plenty of release where we do uh, a site update, and it's like cricket, <laughs> cricket, so, <yeah, laughs> going on. Yeah. And you still stay positive even through that. And it's like, what did it cost you? What, you know, just stay positive um, and just keep pushing, keep pushing. <laughs> and if you work it in, that's another thing on budgeting. If you work in that show as a business expense and you're going there to get knowledge and um, show off your collection and things that you have available from your collection. If you've done all those things, then it should be successful for you. Um, your day at that point for us should never fall short of that in the sense of, oh, well, I didn't do X amount of dollars, so it wasn't a good day. That doesn't necessarily work for us. Hopefully we've given you a little bit of decent information tonight. Well, Will and Roger, sign Remember, out. Well, follow us to get goals. Subscribe. Subscribe. I guess it's like this. Subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram. Facebook. Yeah, it's, it's hit the weird. bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. And as always, check our website, www.flawlesscrestedgeckos.com. Say that three times fast. Yeah. <laughs>